welcome you guys to uh, the first episode of Rugby Rumblings. This is going to be my weekly show. I'm going to try and put together the package, the best parts of rugby across the globe in South Africa. All the rugby news views and give you some views, some background and stuff, stuff that you don't always see as well. So this is the first episode. Please tell me what you think. I really want to see yeah, what you think. I want to hear what you want to hear in this show. See in this show what type of topics you want to cover. And I'll try and get to as many as them as possible. Yeah. But this, let's start with this first week's one. That's a, it's a big week for Springbok Rugby. We have the announcement of Sia Kudisi as uh, Springbok captain. I think that's a huge, huge thing. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, some rugby news, some super rugby news while the guys... Uh, are, are focused on test now as well, some super rugby news coming out there and just some fun stuff as well, so watch through to the end if you can let me know what you think Okay, so let's start. This was a monumental week. Sia Kudisi becoming the uh, new Springbok captain, the first black African to ca captain Springboks, and a monumental day. I think Sia's a guy who really deserves it. He's been around the Springbok team for so long. He's got experience. He's a leader. He's a guy who's really inspirational to a lot of people around the country. Just his whole story, everything that he's done is really, he's a fighter and he's a guy Perfect to lead the side into the test against England. I personally think that if he does well, it's going to be tough to get him out of there, to be very honest, because he's just such a great guy. He's going to be a very popular captain. Yeah, dealing with him over the last past few years, he's one of the most professional rugby players I've ever seen. He manages to, to, to get that mix of being humble, being a people's person, being a leader, all those things together, and still being a professional, a great guy on the field, a great player on the field. Of course, Rossi Erasmus was asked whether uh, he understood the significance, and that, this was his answer. I thought it was quite a good one. Have a look. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't like to look at it that way. Of course, course, as I say, I know him since he's 18, and, and I coached him his first session at the academy there in, in, in Stellenbosch when, when he came in. Uh, and, and, and I know him as a good, great rugby player, and, and, and I've seen him this year go through tough times with four. And tough times as a captain, and, 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 and I've, I've known him four or five years ago when he went through a bad spell as well. So uh, I always know him as the guy who's playing really well and is a great leader. Doing the other part, which is great, great for South Africa and those things, is absolutely just a bonus. Uh, but first things first, on Saturday the Springboks playing Wales late in the evening South African time in Washington, America. This is obviously a game trying to broaden the appeal of the Springbok brand to new territories. And it's a very young team going there. A very young team playing in, in, against Wales and I think we're going to see how good our depth is in South African rugby. I think a lot of these guys have played well in Super Rugby. There's a lot of individuals who start well, but can they get together in one week to, to face a Wales side? We, Wales is also a bit depleted, but they, I think they'll be a lot stronger than we are in terms of experience and depth as such. So this is a big, big question mark on South African rugby's depth. Be interesting to see. I'm hoping, of course, we see a couple of exciting players come out of there. And Rossi reckons he knows the Welsh players pretty well, so he knows what to expect. Uh, this is what he said. I then coached against the uh, Scarlets and, and Cardiff and, and, and Ospreys and, and Dragons for, for, for two years now on that side, so I know every single player. Uh, um, uh, I'm not sure which team uh, they will pick because Scarlet will play this weekend. But, uh, you know, two of, well, the, the Scarlet's getting coached by a New Zealand coach, so they play very much a New Zealand brand. And then I think if most of the Scarlet guys are in that team, will will play, they'll pr pretty much play that way. So, yeah, I know all of them pretty well. It will be a challenge, it will be a tough game. It's going to be a big game to watch. So watch it on Supersport on Saturday night at 11 o'clock. Uh, call it to 11, I think it's the crossover time. It's going to be a great game to watch in the late at night. But, hey, the year's going go, Boca. We hope you're going to win that one. Okay, so let's turn to some other news this weekend. There's the London Sevens, the Blitzbox. Uh, Pride and Joy are, are going into the London Sevens. Four points behind Fiji. They've let it slip, and Fiji are now in the driving seat. The Blitzbox have two tournaments left, but they've got a secret weapon, Sia Bella. So Sia's back, and we all smile at that, I know. And just if, you, if you've forgotten how good he is at Sevens, have a look here. Now, a first carry for Sinatra. Look at the pace of the man. Takes it over the halfway line. Can he go all the way here? Oh, what a start. Say a bellow, Sanafla. Point is, though, the Springbok side need that what they need to do. Springbok 7 side, they need to beat Fiji, and they're going to need to beat them somewhere in these two weeks. Beat them twice, win the, both tournaments, they win the series. I think it's as simple as that, but they've got to go back to get basics. Neil Powell says they're going to go back to basics and worry about their own play, and if they do their own stuff right, like every coach says, they'll be fine. Still, Fiji loom large, and if they lose one of those games against Fiji, they hand them the World Series title. So, go Blitzbocker, we 
right behind you. That'll be on Supersport this weekend as well. Uh, you'll be able to watch the whole London Sevens as well. It's going to be a big tournament. And, and yeah, let's hope Sia Bello lights them up. Uh, moving on, uh, <laughs> and now to some of the stranger things. Let's start with the good stuff. Uh, we said goodbye to Skulk Brits and Issa Nasiwa for Leinster and Saracens. Both won their titles in Pro 14. Le Leinster won the double, and Saracens won the, the, the Premiership as well. And Skulk Brits, what a character, what a guy. And, and this is what uh, uh, he had to say after he, he finished. What does it mean to, to end your career on such a high like this? Um, Cam has been... Um, it's been amazing. It's, um, I know trophy people measure us in trophies, but uh, I'm measuring on the memories I've made and the friends I've made, uh, from players to coaches to supporters to um, to everyone really. And, and uh, my, my life has been enriched by the people from Saracens and around here. So South African boy coming over. It's, uh, I never thought I'd be here for nine years. I, I never thought I'd get emotional about a rugby club. So yeah. I've always thought Skulk uh, Brits has been one of the most unfortunate guys not to play more international rugby. So enjoy your t retirement, mate. And then Issa Nasiwa, well, yeah, there's a player, he's been probably one of New Zealand's most successful exports as well, and a really a fabulous player. Leinster are really going to miss him as well, uh, and I think uh, yeah, he bowed out in style, and, and I think a lot of guys gonna, in that part of the world are going to miss his rugby as well. Uh, well done, enjoy your retirement as well. And now to some of the more controversial stuff in, in the weekend. Uh, the last week. First we had Flip from Amava telling us on Twitter about how you got a four week suspension for pushing a ref. And if you look at this clip, uh, you make up your own mind whether you reckon it's four weeks. I feel it's a bit harsh, but I suppose the rules are there. You're not supposed to touch the ref. Although he shouldn't really be in the way, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Flip, that's pretty harsh, I must admit. Then we had a spate of, of red cards in Super Rugby this weekend. Uh, first Ron Boerter went for this, this uh, cheap shot and I must admit he got a four week ban. Uh, I think he probably you know, ruled himself out of the Springbok squad for that. Probably ruled himself out of contention as being a backup for the box as well. Although he's not really going to miss any game time. I just think it was a rather silly thing to do and I'm sure he believes that as well. But yeah, yeah there's no place for that in this game. Then we had uh, Falao Fainga at the, at the Bulls also diving into the ruck like that. And and before people knew it, he went and kissed the, 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 the Bulls Reserve flock of Matthijs Besson with his head. And uh, not much of a head, but let's be honest, but yeah, you can't really condone that sort of thing in rugby. So he gets a week for that. Yeah, um, discuss it now, coming to the end of this as well. The third red card, which of course caused a lot of consternation amongst my Stormers friends as well, was Raymond Rule taking out Ruan Combrink like this. I understand R Raymond jumped into the air, uh, came down, he had, didn't have too much control, but we, if you look where his arms are, that's what he really got pinned for. His arms came down in Ruan Combrink's face. And, and uh, yeah, guys, it's a harsh one. It really is a harsh one. The rules aren't nice, but refs have been told. They've been told. Players know this. They go up, they must make sure that they don't come into a play. They must make sure if they grab a play in the air, the player must come down safely. And anything that's borderline... I think it was harsh for the Stormers. I think they're doing well in that point in the game. But yeah, I mean, guys, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is Yeah, I understand both sides of the story. But that brings me to the point now, if you look at all these incidents, you've got to ask, where's the consistency across the line? I think that's been the main argument about anything that Sanzo's done in the last couple of years, is that, is there consistency? Well, you judge for yourself. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Is there consistency or is this the main problem? Were the, were the bans justified or what would you have given for them? It'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. Like always, I'd really like to know. Of course, in saying that, all the links for all these videos are down below. So if you, if you, don't, if you want to go watch the full uh, versions of these, please go and support uh, the YouTube sites where they come from. And all the links are down below. Then to our two stars of the week, uh, I usually was going to do one, but uh, Ron Pinal against Montpellier. He was the big star of the week for, for Montpellier getting them into the top 14 final. Well done, Ron. Still a great player, and it's a really a pity that he's not in Springbok contention as such. So. But well done, Ron, and good luck for the final as well. And the other one, of course, is Greek Wizards' Enver Brunt. What a wing. <laughs> the guys are calling him the new Bjorn, Bjorn Besson there from Greek Wars. Of course, Bjorn made his name there with try scoring abilities. And now Enver has scored four tries on the weekend against the Leopards for Greek Wars in the Super Sport Challenge. He scored 11 tries in total in the competition now, and he's really a try scoring machine. It's one to watch, guys. Really one to watch. For the try of the week, uh, going to do something different. Going off to school sports, watch this beauty by Selborne. What a try. Well done, guys. Yeah.
Mercy looking for his runners. Is that Tom Lashley on the outside? They're showing a good pair of heels. Great hands here. And the Sullivan side is going to be running the bottom of the trial line here. They've got a man on the inside. Tom Lashley passing it to Troy Maynard. Troy Maynard now showing a great deal hands. He's going to try in the corner. Great try there by Sullivan. And finally, uh, World Rugby released this wonderful little video. Uh, it's worth going to watch the whole thing as well, guys. Junior Springboks, the junior box trying not to laugh, trying to introduce themselves to the camera. It's good fun. Have a quick look. Hi, I'm Sandy Sandy, and I play pop for the Chuffle <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tyron Green, I play for the Junior Springboks. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> As always, uh, yeah, all these links are below, so go to them, go watch the full versions there. Guys, this week, fixtures, big game, Super Rugby's carrying on in Australia and New Zealand. Have a look there as well. Springboks are playing well, the big game of the weekend. And of course, the London Sevens, where Sia Bella is going to hopefully light up the stage. That's it for me. Let me know what you think. Uh, that's a new thing I'm trying. I'm trying the new concept. Tell me you like it. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me what you want to see. If there's something I've missed and you want to hear the story or you want to get some opinion on it. And of course, even more than that, tell me what you think about this whole thing. Tell me about each topic if you want. Tell me what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear that as well. So, okay, that's it. Remember, press the subscribe button down below and you'll get more of these videos as well. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week and I hope they have a lot more to talk about. Cheers.